For it TV, the world is thinking. Gabriel Duval, a 59 year old former judge from Maryland, replaced fellow Marylander Chase. As I noted earlier, geographic considerations played a very large role in Supreme Court nominations at the time. Duval had served both Jefferson and Madison as the Comptroller of the Treasury, where he had earned Madison's confidence for calm competence. He gained his fame far more recently, however, as the subject of a Chicago Law School academic commentary. Professor David Curry, who sadly passed away last month, suggested in the 50th anniversary issue of the University of Chicago Law Review that Justice Duval was the least significant justice in the history of the Supreme Court, <laughs> at least up till then. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Justice Duval was not without his defenders on the Chicago faculty. Professor Curry's colleague, Frank Easterbrook, immediately rose to Duval's defense. He wrote a strongly worded rebuttal identifying several other justices that were even less significant. <laughs> As Professor Easterbrook put it, he was not about to let Curry's choice stand, quote, without serious consideration of candidates so shrouded in obscurity that they escaped proper attention, even in a contest of insignificance. <laughs> now, now, I am not going to enter into this titanic debate. And I hesitate even to talk about Justice Duval for the fear that I might elevate his significance and deprive him of the source of his fame. <laughs> and I do realize that with only two years of service on the court, the balloting for the title may still be open. <laughs> but I can't resist just a few words. Historians agree that Justice Duval was a warm and congenial colleague on the Marshall Court. A fellow justice described him as urbane and courteous with a gentle manner firm integrity, independence, and sound judgment. We don't know how much he participated in Marshall's robust conference discussions, but he did write several significant decisions involving non-constitutional issues. For example, the author of a biographical sketch, a full Duval biography has yet to be attempted, <laughs> suggested that Duval's main contribution to the law may be that he, quote, is the architect of the federal rule that the ordinary practice of permitting first the debtor and alternatively the creditor to choose to which among competing obligations a payment should be applied did not pertain when different sureties under distinct obligations were interested. <laughs> At the court, of course, that is known as the Duval rule. <laughs> now, Justice, Justice Duval contributed only two words to the court's published constitutional jurisprudence, specifically, I dissent <laughs> in the Dartmouth College case. Now, I have to say I find this sort of brevity admirable. <laughs> Duval chose trenchant words so carefully that even the great Chief Justice John Marshall chose to say nothing in reply. 